Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and it's not going to be me babbling, it's going to be from a, a documentary, a short clip, that I thought was very cool, and I wanted to share it, but before I get started, I've had a few comments on uh, my music videos, we're not interested in your music videos, well, if you read my channel description, that's what I say you're going to get, and uh, if you have a problem, if you have a problem enough where you need to leave a comment saying you don't like my music videos, just unsubscribe for me and leave me alone. That's all I got to say about that. And a reminder, I do have a playlist, latest history uploads. So if you're not interested in the music, you can go to the top of my channel here and just get my history uploads. It's not that difficult. And... I remember as a young person when MTV started broadcasting music videos and how cool that was. And now I can just turn on my phone and broadcast a music video to the world. I think that's pretty cool. And I think I have some pretty talented friends, people that I like and spend time with. This is my Google Plus page for those who have never seen it. But Al and Adina and Seth and Dendel, uh, you know, I've told some of you, you know, history is just an interest of mine. And music is your life. And I like you and spend time with you so it matters to me so that's why i upload music videos but going over to my machu picchu video here this is machu picchu and this is what the ruins look like from overhead but this is a very cool clip i thought uh, uh mr bingham who discovered machu picchu this is about his final trek up to the ruins, and there's some pictures here, original pictures, of what this place actually looked like upon discovery. So I just thought this was really cool. We're sharing, and it's really cool to put yourself into his place and what he must have been feeling when he discovered this place. That, you know, for him, he really didn't have many answers to upon stumbling upon it. And this is just a really cool period of time where there was many explorers who just had a lot of balls like Shackleton and Mallory and Irvin and Scott and other people who were exploring the world at this time and making incredible discoveries. But I just thought this was worth sharing. And here you go. This Here's a clip on the Discovery Machu Picchu. Hope you thought this was cool and you all have a very nice day. There is a new government road which Bingham follows into a region visited only by local Indians since Incan times. Somewhere, lost behind these ranges, are Incan cities that fit the descriptions in the ancient library chronicles. The chronicles say the city will be called Vitkos, not Machu Picchu. It will have a palace with an extensive view, marble doorways, a great rock shrine, and a mention of another name, Vilcabamba. What Bingham cannot know is that there is more than one lost city, and it will be his destiny to find them. <laughs> On July 24th, Bingham and his team are camped near the spot where the drunken Cavedo has told them of ruins. What happens next is a story Bingham will tell and retell for the rest of his life. On the sixth day out from Cuzco, we arrived at a little plantation called Mandor Pampa. The owner, Arteaga, had said that on top of the magnificent precipices nearby, there were some ruins at a place called Machu Picchu. I offered to pay him well if he would show me the ruins. He demurred and said it was too much of a climb for such a wet day. But when he found that we were willing to pay him a sol, three or four times the ordinary daily wage in this vicinity, he finally agreed to guide us. Bueno, tal vez el tiempo cambia.
Leaving the stream, we now struggled up the bank through the dense jungle, and in a few minutes reached the bottom of a very precipitous slope. For an hour and 20 minutes, we had a very hard climb. A good part of our distance, we went on all fours, sometimes holding on by the tips of our fingers. Artiaga groaned and said there were lots of snakes here. There were no ruins or andines of any kind in sight. Shortly after noon, just as we were completely exhausted, we reached a little grass-covered hut 2,000 feet above the river, where several good-natured Indians, pleasantly surprised at our unexpected arrival, welcomed us with dripping gourds full of cool, delicious water. Then they set before us a few cooked sweet potatoes. <laughs> Arteaga had been there once before. They sent a small boy with me as a guide. Hardly had we left the hut and rounded the promontory than we were confronted by an unexpected sight. A great flight of beautifully constructed stone-faced terraces perhaps a hundred of them, each hundreds of feet long and ten feet high. We patiently followed the little guy. Suddenly, I found myself confronted with the walls of ruined houses built of the finest quality of Inca stonework. The little boy urged us to climb up a steep hill over what seemed to be a flight of stone steps. We came to a great stairway of large granite blocks. Suddenly, we found ourselves standing before two of the most interesting structures in ancient America. Fortunately, in this land where accuracy of reporting what one has seen is not a prevailing characteristic of travelers, I had a good camera and the sun was shining. Bingham discovers whole building complexes, masked by centuries of tangled undergrowth. What little can be cleared is unmistakably Incan. The Intihuatana, used by priests to observe the heavens. Perfectly aligned to observe the summer solstice. Windows carved with exquisite skill, a ruin without equal, and a city unknown. Machu Picchu, a mysterious name that Bingham has never seen in any chronicle, a riddle bequeathed by the Incan gods. A holy city built to be near the home of the Thunder God, reaching towards the sacred sun, ancestor of the Incan sovereigns. A perfect blend of architecture and the natural environment. A city that shouldn't exist. <laughs> 